All right, welcome to another video. It has been a while. Unfortunately, this is just a little side hobby for me. I have a day job, so I don't always have a lot of time to do this. Plus, I simply haven't really bought anything new to unbox or review, uh, nor have I really done any work to the old Mustang uh, to make any updates. So I'm finally back with that. Today we're gonna be doing some really simple, easy to do um, upgrades and just kind of maintenance stuff uh, that is, are gonna help my car to run a little bit better. I'm gonna be installing this k &N high airflow filter. I opted to do this rather than going with a cold air intake system, not only for cost, but also because I'm only rocking the V6 here. I'm not really looking to increase horsepower or go really fast. I just want it to run well. And so this is gonna help do that. Uh, of course, some uh, just maintenance item, these Rain-X uh, wiper blades I'm gonna install, and then some new spark plugs. As always, if you wanna see more content like this, Go ahead, hit that like button, uh, share this video, comment below, uh, and subscribe to my channel. I do have a 100 subscriber giveaway uh, for um, that I'm going to be doing when I hit 100 subscribers. Going to be giving away a uh, little code reader uh, for all of you and uh, more uh, updates on how I'm going to choose that after I get to 100 subscribers. But we are starting to get close, uh, so stay with me. So first, uh, let's do the air filter. That's probably the easiest thing. All right, so this is supposed to be easy. Uh, there's just some clips. You don't have to take this out to do it. Uh, there's just some uh, clips that you have to undo. I always find, though, it's still a little bit of a struggle to get it loose and then also to get it to fit back together. But really, uh, it's just a matter of um, just kind of wrangling it in there. You just got to kind of force it sometimes. Um, you know, usually it's going to be pretty okay to do that. So there's a little clip right here. Just pop that up. It unlatches there. That one there. And I'm pretty sure that's all there is. I don't think there's another one underneath. So yeah, they should come apart, and they do. Um, so there you go. And then once you get this kind of out of the way, the filter is right in here, and there it is. Uh, it's the old one, as you can see, it needed to be replaced anyway. Uh, it's pretty old and dirty. All right, so here is the new air filter. It's supposed to just drop right in. We'll see if that ends up being the case. It is a high flow air filter. Uh, it is supposed to let more air through um, and increase your performance. It is also washable and reusable uh, as far as I know, based on um, the instructions that I read, you don't have to do anything for it. It doesn't take oil or anything like that. It should just pop right in. And then every 50,000 miles, you literally just wash it off, I think, with soap and water, um, and you can reuse it. And it does seem to fit just perfect right back in there. This is going to pop back down. Again, getting quite aligned is always a little bit of a trick. And there we go. I'm still not sure that's quite there. Let's see. Not quite. Hang on a sec. All right, that looks about right. We should fold over. Clip is a little loose, but I think I got it in now. And there we go. Clips down in place. Let's clip over here, same deal. Looks over, clips down in place. Just check, make sure this didn't come loose. It didn't, so there we go. It's as easy as that installing the new high flow air filter. Much easier, of course, than uh, installing a whole new cold air intake. Also, 
It's designed to work with this. I mean, the engine was designed with this in mind. It's designed to work with this air filter, the system, right? And so you put a cold air intake on it, can mess with that. Um, obviously, people know what they're doing. They can do it all the time. But for me, just not worth it. All right, so here we go. I'm not really sure how well you can see this, but in there, uh, just poking out there underneath that rusty bolt at the top is the spark plug. Let's see if I can get it to focus a little bit better. There it is. See it right there? It's in there. It's uh, not, not this thing. It's right underneath, right there. There it is. And uh, there's six, six cylinder, so uh, gonna be replacing all of those. I waited to see uh, what the spark plug wires were gonna look like before I bought new ones. I think I'm gonna need to replace those. Uh, here is that spark plug wire that I just took off. You can see it's cracked there. It's not in great shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the new plugs in and then I'm gonna replace those wires as well um, when I'm able to go get some new ones. I do this one at a time. That's the easiest way to not get anything messed up. I'll do the same when I actually replace the spark plug wires. Um, and uh, then you can see there's one there. There's gonna be another next to it. And the last one is back down in there. Um, I can't even see my hand. The last one is gonna be, you know, back down in there. It's gonna be kind of hard to reach, I think. So over here are the tools I'm gonna to use. I have my 3 8 inch Craftsman ratchet. I have the spark plug socket, an extension, and then this wobble extension, hopefully to make it easier to reach that little tough to reach one in the back. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side of the engine. So let's just go ahead and see how this goes. All right, so first one out, put this on, get it over in, see if I can reach it without the extension. There we go. At this point, it's easier to take the ratchet off and just kind of unscrew it by hand. And there we go. Here's the old one. To be honest, it doesn't look that bad. Some corrosion there. Like I said, I'm definitely gonna have to fix the, or replace the wires, but We'll see how she does. So I'm just gonna put these in one at a time, take an old one out, put a new one in, put the uh, wire back on, move on to the next. New one. And obviously you can tell how much nicer the tip is, but. Okay, so the first one is in. Had a little detour because I dropped my socket. <laughs> Had to fish that out. I'm just gonna put the wire back on, even though it's trashed. Still go on for now. And there it clicked. And I'll get that replaced as soon as I can. Now I'm gonna move on to the next one. Well, you probably didn't need to see uh, all me undoing each one of these. To get to the other side, I had to take the air intake off loose so I could get down in there and get to them. I did 
uh, the, I don't know if this is in order, but just in the number that I did after doing the three over there, I did two more, went to do the last one, went to pull off the spark plug wire. And what do you know? This just yanked out from the inside of the spark plug wire. So I guess I'm going to run to advanced auto right now, get new spark plug wires because otherwise the car won't run <laughs> or run right. Um, I was gonna wait and do that kind of at my leisure, but that needed to be done anyway. So I'm off to get new spark plug wires after I change this last spark plug. We'll go ahead and do that. So when I get back, all I literally have to do is put the new wires on and uh, hopefully that will go nice and easy. All right, so as is the usual thing when you're doing DIY projects, nothing ever goes the way you think it will. I just showed you a moment ago how one of the wires broke. Uh, I just get, got back, big shouts to O'Reilly Auto Part that I was able to get these at. Um, they were hard to find. I wasted a bunch of time driving around different places. Uh, the first place I went to was Advanced Auto. Actually, I checked online. They did not have any. They were going to have to order some. So then I checked online for AutoZone. AutoZone had some in stock. I ordered them online to go pick them up in store at AutoZone. And they, I, I went there and they didn't have them. Their online was wrong. So I had to cancel that order. I got a refund. And then I just drove down the road to O'Reilly's that fortunately had these. Um bit of a mess there but uh, so here's what we are going to do here is my secret to doing this kind of work is you do it one at a time take off an old one put on a new one take off an old one put on a new one then you don't have to worry about cross wiring things or messing anything up so here we go gonna do that right now gonna probably put it on a little time lapse for you see if I can find some uh, nice little music for you to listen to while you watch me do this. All right, so there you have it. Uh, I need to get some clips for in here. Need to get some clips for in there to hold those uh, loose wires in place. The other ones off the old wires don't seem to be salvageable. But now here is the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and see if she fires up and runs on all cylinders. All right, well, there you have it. I have to do another test drive to make sure that everything is good, but she runs and seems to be working just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, this took me a lot longer than I thought. I'll do the windshield wipers later. You probably didn't need to see that in the video anyway. So I'm gonna clean up, take her for a drive, and make sure everything is still working. Hopefully, uh, I'll, I'll see some a little bit better performance or, you know, it'll just be better for the car regardless. So thanks everybody, and I will see you next time. And until then, Judo Sailor, out.